Well, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Good evening, everyone. Once again, we are excited, super excited to be with you on tonight (laughs) because there is a word from the Lord that we are ready to share. And we are so excited. We declare that you had a blessed week and so excited about you and I and we together as the Relentless Global Church family. And we are ready to teach the word. May this word go all over the world. May this word reach the lost in Jesus' name. So good evening, everyone. Let's connect on tonight and let's prepare to receive the word of the living God in Jesus' mighty name. Pastor Betty. Hi, good evening, everyone. We're so grateful for every opportunity the Lord allows us to come on board to speak his word to his people. What a privilege it is, and we consider it an honor. So we Amen. thank you so much for tuning in. Press that share button at this time, if you don't mind, uh, to be a blessing to your family, your Absolutely. friends, your loved ones, or the, your those that are in your circle of influence. We would love to speak God's word to them. We are looking for you at Relentless Global Church. We ask that you come on out. Um, at our new location, which is 27327 okay. Robinson Road, and it is uh, in Oak Ridge, North, Texas, 77385. We have two wonderful uh, opportunities on Sundays at 830 and another one at mm-hmm. 10. Absolutely. And we are just so grateful to God to what he, for what he's doing in our lives. And we just shared the word of God. We had visitors on Sunday. It was yes. so good to see uh, those precious people coming in and receiving the word of God and just love it, loving on them. We're at the place where mm-hmm. love reigns. So we Amen. ask that you come on out, invite someone, bring someone to church with you. Amen. It is yes. just a blessing to be in the house. Of Relentless Global. Amen. Remember again, hit the share button. Yes. Uh, you never know who you might win to the Lord simply because you connect with someone else and let's share the word of the living God. Amen. Because if this world is going to be saved, they're, they're going to have to hear the gospel. Jesus said, the Bible says, Absolutely. He will not return to the earth until the gospel is preached to the ends Absolutely. of the world. And this is our opportunity as Relentless Global Church Absolutely. to preach the gospel that the Lord has given us yes. to preach it to the world. So thank Thank you uh, once again for hitting that share button, helping us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So good evening, everyone. Good evening, Brother Daniel. Good to see you on tonight. Well, we're going to teach tonight uh, our third lesson entitled Remember Lot's Wife. And this is going to be our last lesson. And we're going to try to close it out. Our subtopic is it's time to move forward. Don't look back. So so tonight, the very very first word I would like for you to write tonight is Mm. don't look back. Amen. Amen. Genesis 19 and 26 says, but his wife, Lot's wife, Mm. looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Mm. In other words, because she could not let go of her past, she turned into a pillar of salt, which represents bitterness. Mm. So she lived a life of bitterness because uh, they were in a city called Sodom and Gomorrah, Mm. which represents sodomy, uh, homosexuality, all those things. And again, we're not trying to uh, talk about anybody. We're just preaching what the Bible says. And the Bible says God is against such things. So what happened to Lot and his wife? They stayed in an atmosphere of lying. They stayed in the atmosphere of drug addiction. They stayed in an atmosphere of manipulators. They stayed in the atmosphere of molesters. And whatever other sin that you want to call out tonight, they hung around these people and they end up being diluted. They stop going to church. They stop supporting the things of God. They stop giving to the things of God. Yeah. They disconnected from men and women of God, including Abram, Lot, and uh, separated from his uncle and end up compromising his virtues and his value. Wow. The things that we're learning from is that they were, they were living in the past that led to their demise. Wow. They were stuck in the past with no spiritual progression. Mm. They were putting the Lord on the back burner and not making the things of God a priority. Uh, Lot was unwilling to leave his past. So what happened? The angels had to grab them Mm -hmm. and to bring them out. Now, why did the angel do that? Because Abram, the the uncle, or a spiritual father type father, was praying and interceding on behalf of his nephew and family. Mm -hmm. Looking back destroys your morals and your values. Because most people don't know how to let go of the past. They're holding on to the to a dead family member. They're holding on to an old husband wow. who has divorced your ex wife, ex girlfriend, boyfriend. Holding on to dead things of the past, and you you can't move forward to the things that God is calling us to. Come on. 
we went to Proverbs 13 and 20, which says, He who walks with the wise will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. So the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, mm -hmm. Do not be deceived. Evil communication corrupts good morals or corrupts your character. So it, it's vitally important that you recognize who you are connected to. Yes, so is. let's try to close this tonight. We're going to talk about four things that we went over very quickly. Okay. And then, hey, uh, Sister Hayes, God bless you. Welcome on tonight. We're going to talk about Remember Lot's Wife, The Lessons We Learned. So there are eight of them. We're going to talk about four quickly, and then we're going to close with the last four. On. Number one, what lessons do we learn from Lot's wife and from, uh, from their situation in Sodom and Gomorrah? First of all, the Lord always directs us. John 16 and 13 says, however, the spirit of truth. He, uh, when he has come, what will he do? He will lead us and he will guide us. Yes, God is. always speaks always. to his people. Yes, come on, write that back to say, God always speaks to me. God come on, write that back. God always speaks to me. Yes, you got to understand that when you get saved and give Jesus Christ, uh, 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 you get saved and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh -huh. then you got to understand immediately connected to that is the spirit of the living God. No one can call Jesus Lord except by the spirit. Yes. So the spirit of Christ is on the inside of us. That spirit that dwells on the inside of us, he's the one that directs you Absolutely. and guides you and lets you know that the word of God is true. Number two, listen to the warning. Lessons that we learned from Lot's wife. Listen, listen to, the to the warning. Yes. As my doctor said, I use this example, my doctor, medical doctor. He said, Leroy, your body always warns you. So you just don't have a heart attack. Yes. You just don't have diabetes. Yes. You just don't have high blood pressure. Yes. Your body warns you there are things that are attacking your body and lets you know that there's something wrong. Mm. But you have to watch this. He said these words, Leroy, you have to pay attention to your body. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, number yes. one. And number two, listen to the warning yes. because God always warns his people. Amen. Ezekiel 33 and 5. Amen. Ezekiel 33 and 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet but did not heed the warning. Mm -hmm. His blood is upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his own soul. So what does God use to warn us? He uses prophets. Mm. He uses pastors. He uses godly family members. He uses dreams and visions. Yes. And he uses, of course, the voice of the Holy Spirit. My goodness. Number three, faith requires me to move. Faith requires me to move. Yes. So we can't stay Sitting still. See, the kingdom of God, I said again last Wednesday, is forcefully advancing. The, 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 the kingdom of God is a will in the middle of the will. The kingdom of God is always growing, always rising, always expanding. We as Christians are never sitting still because the spirit of Christ on the inside of us is growing us and expanding Hallelujah. us. Yes. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. Hallelujah. The lessons we learned from Lot's wife. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. Faith requires me, you and I, to move forward. Brethren, I do not count myself as to have apprehended the Apostle Paul, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching what? Forward to the things that are before me, I press. Watch what he says. I don't press to look back. I press to move forward. I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. Because the kingdom of God is always going up. The kingdom of God is always advancing, rising. Advancing, yes. Luke chapter 9 verse Glory 62. One of my favorite scriptures. Luke chapter 9 verse 62. But Jesus said, yes. no one having put his hand to the plow wow. and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Even in the natural, a farmer sows seed. He, he breaks open the fallow ground by using a horse a mule, and to till the ground. Mm -hmm. But what does the horse do? They move you forward. Yes, they don't look backwards. They are moving forward. Right. So Jesus uses the illustration of a, of a plowman by letting them know it's time for you to move forward. So what are the things he's saying? Number one, no more procrastination. No more. Come on, write that back to pastor. No more, no more yes. procrastination. Stop Amen. being lazy. Number two, stop putting off things for tomorrow that you can do today. today. Be faithful today. Yeah. Number three, no more backsliding. Mm. 
No more backsliding. Walking away from the things of God to stay where you are. That's backsliding. Oh no more second thoughts. Yes. When the word comes to you, do what? Move yes. forward. Obey the word. Yes. Move forward. And lastly, no more doubting. Amen. No more doubting. No man puts his hand to the plow looking backward is fit for the kingdom. Yes. Uh, number four. Lessons we learn from Lot's wife. Remember your first love. That's Revelations 2 and 4. He says, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. My God. Isaiah 63 and 7 says, I will mention the loving kindness of my God. But then I love this one, Hosea 1 and 2. We went over these last Wednesday. Hosea 1 and 2. God told Hosea the prophet to marry a prostitute or to marry a harlot. Mm. Why did God use the prophet to do that? Because she was married, but she kept getting pregnant from other men. She was unfaithful. Oh when, when you don't move forward, one of the things that causes us to stand still in the realm of the spirit is that we're unfaithful or we're covenant breakers oh. or we betray our, our God by not being faithful to the things of God. Wow. So don't remember, don't don't lose your first love. Come back Amen. to your first love. Amen. So let's go to new information. Number five, lessons we learn from Lot's wife. Yes. Set your heart on God. Amen. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. Set your heart yes. on the things of God. Amen. Jeremiah 29 and 13 Ooh. says, you will seek me and find me. Yes. When you seek me with your whole heart. Oh, so we have to set our hearts on the things of God. I have to love listening to the word. Absolutely. I have to love praying. Yes. I have to love meditating on the things of God. I have to love coming to church. I have to love my pastors. Yes. I have to love giving to the things of God. Yes. I have to love serving in children's church. I have to love serving in the things of God to lift up the kingdom. If I be lifted up, yes, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 12. Let me slow it down. Okay. Second Chronicles chapter 12, verse 14. We're going to find another example of it. And he did evil. Who is this? King Rehoboam. Mm -hmm. He did evil in the sight of the Lord because he did not prepare his heart yes. to seek after the Lord. So what happened in the story? God raised up a prophet to give King Rehoboam a word. And he told him, if you don't repent and change your heart, Israel will be destroyed because of one man. My God. So what happened? King Rehoboam was in the spirit of apostasy, mm. falling away from the things of God. That's what apostasy is. But the good thing is that this is that he repented. He received the word of the prophet. He repented. Yes. And he humbled himself under the mighty hand of God yes. and God spared the nation. Yes. What about you, man of God? Yes. When you repent and humble yourself Amen. before the hands of the Lord, yes. uh, before the almighty God, then God's hand is stayed based oh, on judgment. Hallelujah. But when you humble yourself, oh, when you repent and turn from your wicked ways, yes. the Bible says that God, will, you will hear from heaven and he will heal, heal. your land. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes, but the Bible says he prepared his heart to seek yes, the Lord. Yes, he did. Number six, lessons we learn uh, from uh, Lot's wife. Yes. Receive the Lord's divine saints. Mm. God Come has on. raised up people in your life. To give you a word. Yes. God has raised up men and women in yes. your life to give you a word. Yes. Ephesians 4 and 11. And he himself, Jesus, gave some apostles, represents ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Some prophets, that's the seer. Mm -hmm. Some evangelists, one who brings good news. Some pastors, they are godly shepherds. Mm -hmm. And some teachers who give you instructions. Why does God give you these men and women of God? Mm -hmm. To equip the saints for the work of ministry, to build you up. Why? Oh, that's so that you won't backslide. That's right. God has raised up these gifts in the body or in the church so that you and I could rise and not fall and faint and fall after sin. Oh my goodness. The yes. same thing in Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Yes. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely mm -hmm. the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals it, his secrets, to his servants, the prophets. His servants. God always raises up men and women of God to yes. give you a word yes. to point to Christ, number one. 
Number two, to be a messenger. Yeah. Number three, I love this one. Love by warning. Oh, I love that. Love. Can you write that one? Love by warning. Number four, a personal communication from God through his men and women of God to you. And lastly, prophets represent a plan of deliverance or a plan of salvation. Second Chronicles 20 verse 20. Amen. So they rose up early in the morning and went into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat, stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Believe in the Lord your God, yes. and you shall be established, Amen. succeed, or overcome. Ooh. Believe his men and women of God, his prophets, yes. and you shall prosper. Yes. I'm saying that God has raised up in your life prophets pastors, teachers, evangelists, but God has also raised up a godly father, a godly mother, a godly aunt, a godly uncle, and Abraham to your family. I be Abraham. Come on, right back to back to Paris, say, I be Abraham. I be Abraham. I'm the Abraham of my family. Yes, right. Let me give you quickly some examples of, of, of prophets God has raised up in the lives of his people. Abraham was a prophet to life. Moses was a prophet to Israel. Peter was a prophet to the Jews. Paul was a prophet to the Gentiles. And Jesus was a prophet to the disciples. I'm here to tell you God always raised up divine saints so that they can have a word for the people. Yes. Lessons we learn from Lot's wife. Two more. Number seven is close to grace is not enough. Close to grace is not enough. I can't almost pray. I need to pray. I can't almost be a tither. I need to be a tither. I can't almost forgive. I must forgive. Acts chapter 26, verse 28. Well, you're going to love this one. Acts chapter 26, verse 28. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. <laughs> so you can't almost be saved. Oh you can't almost have security. You can't almost have safety. You must be secure in knowing that I'm redeemed through Jesus Christ by the blood of the Lamb. A King, King Agrippa said, you almost persuaded me, but close to grace <laughs> is not enough. <laughs> Romans 8 and 58 says, for I am persuaded, this oh, is Paul, that neither death nor oh, life Yes. Nor, <laughs> neither death nor life, mm -hmm. nor principalities, powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Mm -hmm. He said that nothing, nothing so shall not separate me from the love of God, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus. In Christ you can't, Jesus. This, we're talking about nothing. close to grace yes. is not enough. Oh my gosh. Matthew 15 and 8. That's good. Matthew 15 and 8. For these people draw near me with their mouth. They draw near me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. <laughs> First Corinthians 12 and 1 says, you're like sounding brass and tingling cymbals. Many of us in the body of Christ are oh, just running our mouths, but it's your heart that he wants, not just your words. Ezekiel 33 verse 31. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 31. Watch what the prophet says. So they come to you as a people, as people do. They sit before you as my people and they hear your words, but they do not obey them. For with their mouth, they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own selfish gain. Close to grace is not enough. Amen. And we close with number eight. Backsliding is gradual. You just don't fall. Yeah. It's a progression. Wow. Luke 22 verse 40. Let's look at the example of Peter. Mm. When he came to the place, he said to them, Jesus, mm. pray that you enter not into temptation. The word temptation is translated in the Hebrew, Macca, M-A-C-C-A-H. It means melting away. Right. It means a falling away. It means trial and testing. Yes. It means to be despair, in, in despair. Yes. Uh, uh, it means a fading away by sinful nature. Mm. So he says, pray 
that you enter not into, into temptation. Mm -hmm. So we find Peter here and a group of the, of the uh, disciples who were falling asleep, but they were fading away in the midst of Jesus' suffering. They were fading. Luke 22, verse 54. Having arrested him, Jesus, they led him and brought him to the high priest. But Peter followed from a distance. Watch this. A distance. He was not close. Mm -hmm. He followed at a distance, a slow fading away. It means a distance is translated no longer close, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, to withdraw from. Mm -hmm. Number three, to be detached. Mm -hmm. Number four, to separate. Number five, to be removed. And last one, number six, to set apart. See, Lot and his wife were in Sodom and Gomorrah, wow. and they were slowly being taken away from oh Abram. The prophet. Yes. They were slowly being taken away from Come the things on. of God. Yes. Because they stayed in a compromised situation oh, too long. My gosh. Now here's our last scripture on tonight. Yes. Lessons we learned from Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. Backsliding is a slow progression. Yes. See, you just didn't start smoking and, and get cancer. You started with one cigarette, yes. then you went to two. And then next day you came, you became addicted to nicotine. You just didn't become an alcoholic overnight. Yeah. It was one drink that led to multiple drinks. Yeah. And now you got cirrhosis of the liver. You just didn't become physically abusive. You hit your spouse once and then you became progressively abusive. Yeah. You just didn't become a thief. You stole some bubble gum. <laughs> you didn't become a thief overnight. You stole some money out of your mom's purse. Then next day you stole something out of your auntie's house and from your grandmother and all of a sudden now you're stealing cars and now you're in jail wow. because it's a progression. Wow. Lastly tonight, Matthew 26 verse 74. We're looking at Peter's illustration of fading away. Yes. Then he began to curse and to swear wow. at the little girl saying, I do not know the man Jesus because they said you've been with him. He denied Jesus Three times, the Bible says, immediately the cock crowed. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus saying, before the cock crow, you will deny me, Peter, three times. And the Bible says, he went away and wept bitterly. Why did he end up in bitterness? Because he did not stay close to Jesus. He ended up being distracted. He ended up being distracted. Listen to me tonight. He ended up being distracted. Not being focused on his vision. Not being focused on his purpose. Not being focused on his dream. And his house ended up being divided. And a house divided against itself will not stand. That's exactly what happened to Lot and his wife. Wow. They fell because they were distracted. Oh, so the lesson that we're learning, the last lesson, lesson that we're learning from Lot's wife yes. is to keep your focus. Yes. Stay focused on yes. your dreams. Yes. Stay focused on your visions. Yes. Stay focused on your eternal hope, yes. which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Stay connected to the church. Stay connected to your pastors. Stay connected to an anointing that we may do what? Rise yeah. together. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. How how about that word? Was that not a good, a good word on tonight? Good. Come on, let me see those hand claps that again. That was good. Yes. Remember Lot's My wife. Gosh. I'm not looking backwards. Yes. I'm not looking at 2023. Yes. I'm in 2024. Watch Amen. this. Looking toward a good year in my 2024, leading and going towards my 2025. Amen. Because there's nothing but Faithful goodness witness. in my future. Amen. 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 Remember Lot's wife. Amen. And I'm not going to be her. Ooh. I'm not going to live a life of bitterness and anger and no. jealousy. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. I'm going to overcome my past. I'm going to forgive myself. Amen. I'm going to forgive my past. And guess what? We're moving forward Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. So go to our website at www.relentlesslobalchurch.org. You can send your tithes, offering, and gifts of love at any time, and you can be a, 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 a blessing to the kingdom of God. Our Amen. email address is info at relentlesslobalchurch.org. As we told Relentless Global Church, Pastor Betty, yes. remember to write your visions for your home, yes. the, the visions for this year, your new visions, your new dreams, write them down, bring them to church, put them in my hand, and we're going to anoint it with oil. We're going to pray for you Amen. and then sow your seed based on your vision for your house Amen. and watch the kingdom of God manifest Amen. your dreams and your visions. Amen. Also, our office number is 713-936-6848 if you'd like to call us. Amen. And our mailing address is RGC, PO Box 2202, 
Houston, Texas, 77252. Mm -hmm. And remember, Relentless Global Church is where love, love reigns. reigns. Come and worship with us and experience the love of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We're going to love the hell out of you. We're going to love the racism out of you. Hallelujah. We're going to teach that word under the Hallelujah. anointing and the power of God that's going to save you from God. yourself yes. and redeem you from the curse of the law, redeem you from the pain of your past because there is a word in the house just for you. Yes, Pastor Ben. Love you. Thank you for, so much for joining <laughs> in on tonight. We appreciate you taking your time to hear God's word and to listen to what God has placed on our hearts. Amen. So bring someone on Facebook Live on Wednesday nights. Bring Amen. them yes. uh, with, uh, with us uh, uh, on, during the live service would be great. Okay. And if not, you know, have that person to tune in uh, Monday through Friday or Monday through Sunday. Yes. Uh, because the word of God is always good. It is it's effective and it will take Brother root Miller. in your life. So thank you so much for being a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen. We are enjoying our new facility. Things are progressively yes, being is. added to the church. And yes, we're, we are. thank God for your faithful tithing and giving and to our make a difference because we're able to get things done and Amen. we're doing it debt free. Everybody write back to Pastor Lastly on tonight say, I am debt free. I am debt free. The same grace, Amen. the same anointing, the same favor upon the minister, upon my wife and I be upon you. And we declare and decree, may the Lord prosper your Amen. way. May the Lord keep you. Angels of the living God go before you to prosper your way, to make everything easy and smooth for your life this week. And we're looking forward to seeing you all on time. Yes. Amen. <laughs> at Relentless Global Church at our two worship experiences at 8.30 and 10 o'clock a.m. Come, there is a word in the house just for you. God bless you all. We love you, Brother love Miller, you. again. God bless you and all our, our regular faithful. What are some names we need to call our baby? Oh, Miss Margaret. We're Ashley, Miss Margaret. Ashley, Amen. God Dre, bless y'all. Miss Linda. The Miller household. <laughs> uh, me. Jerick and Celeste, we oh love y'all. Amen. We miss y'all Sunday. Miss D and AJ, <laughs> God bless y'all. Miss Ophelia, God the Banks family, we bless you Miss all. Colleen. Carol, amen. God bless hey, you. Miss Darlene, we bless the Thomas household. We love Bree, you all. Eddie. Brian and Eddie, we love you all. We love you. We love you with the oh, love of Jesus. God bless you guys. May the shalom of God rest upon you. Shalom. We love you. See you all on Sunday. God Blessings. bless you. Good night, all.